evening everyone and welcome to the Cambridge Union. As you all know, for the main debate tonight we have the emergency debate. The motion for tonight's emergency debate is this House believes that prostitution is a legitimate for business. Speaking first of the proposition, we have Paula, who is a first year historian at the case. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this debate by stating a bold truth. Prostitution, the oldest profession in the world, whether legitimate or not, is here to stay. Call it inherent human behavior or one of the most profitable businesses around, the debate about prostitution today is not about morality, but about making a choice as a society to either ignore this business that goes on around us or to legitimize it and regulate it for the benefit of all. Prostitution, whether we like it or not, behaves as a business already. As Stephen Levitt, the writer of Freakonomics, which you might be familiar with, and a colleague asserted in the report on prostitution in Chicago, the fact that it is in the interest of both the prostitute and the client to find one another, and that they mutually benefit from the transaction that they perform together, illustrates how prostitution operates as a market. Actually, there's evidence, not only in Chicago, where prostitution remains legal, but in all major developed cities where it makes up a large part of inner city life, that prostitution has become sufficiently mature as a business in some respects. Pimps, for instance, will tend to pay their workers above the efficiency wage, one that is above the one determined by demand and supply, in order to increase their performance. What does this mean for us today? Well, that when you add the word legitimate to what is already a business, the government is, in, is essentially enforcing regulations that may not be so alien to the industry and will guarantee a better treatment of all sex workers. But we shouldn't wait for prostitution to begin regulating itself. We should bring it under the wings of the law so that it may be thoroughly regulated and monitored through official channels. For indeed, a legitimate business means a regulated business, a business that works under the framework of law. For those of us in this room who are concerned with human rights, as I believe my opponents are, we believe that a legitimate business is safer for the people it employs than an illegitimate one. A legitimate business is a first step in granting sex workers their basic civil rights. It is the only way we can give them a real voice in society and a real chance to defend themselves. It is the only way to make prostitutes less dependent on pimps and their clients. The security afforded by a legal job means that even when business is down, prostitutes will not have to put themselves at more risk. A legitimate business on the part of the government means responsibility on the part of the government to protect the workers of an industry and removes the hypocrisy of the criminal justice system when combating cases of abuse and even human trafficking. In a wider sense, legitimate prostitution will socially empower those who have been at the margins of society for too long, not because they chose this way of life, but because they've been imprisoned by it, unable to leave prostitution even when they could, because of the stigmatization. Legitimate prostitution is the first step in combating stigmatization and in fostering self-esteem and self-care that will ultimately benefit the moral welfare of society as a whole. In countries where prostitution is already a legitimate business, such as in South Korea, where it makes up about 1.6% of the national GDP, let it be noted that in proportion, this is more than the United States portion uh, from all agriculture and even the apparel industry, which we're more concerned with today. Um, so in these countries, there are more effective channels for governments to control and monitor the business of prostitution, and there is less scope for abuse to take place. Granted, prostitution remains a risky business to work in, but by being legitimate, it is acknowledged by the government, who instead of fueling a corrupt industry, will be more able to reform those aspects that need to be reformed, and especially to ensure the protection, through legal means, of the employees of the sex trade, those whose welfare should be our primary concern tonight. Let me restate our basic premise. Prostitution is here to stay. It is ingrained in society and we must make a choice between lawful and unlawful prostitution, between self-willing and forceful prostitution. Ladies and gentlemen, prostitution, prostitution is and should remain a legitimate business. Thank you. Based around the charity and 
Um, I wanted to sort of speak um, against this motion. Um, I, as Rachel said, just graduated and I was just in the process of starting Cambridge University Anti-Slavery International. I wanted to talk first about the definition of legitimate. Um, my opponent said that it isn't a moral argument and I think that it's, that's completely wrong. To look at um, the context of legitimate in the Cambridge Dictionary, you can see that legitimate is something that is legal and is also reasonable and acceptable. I would therefore argue that prostitution can never be a legitimate business because it is not something that is acceptable. Um, I wanted to point to a case study and look at somewhere where prostitution has been made legal in Amsterdam. Jessen in 1993 reviewed local authority approaches to prostitution and found a, discourse, a shift in discourse morality. Rather than looking at something from, from the point of view of women who have been prostituted and women that have been put through violence from this profession, if you want to call it, they will move the discourse to something which is just founded by work. So I was also looking at the study by Boutelier in 1991, who also found that by looking at something from a legal context, it was being looked at by, in a very technocratic way. Morality is therefore overlooked as being a valuable contributor to combating prostitution and the problems that come with it. Therefore, legalising it does not make it any more legitimate, it just clouds over the issues. Um, I also wanted to talk about the fact that in studies, a study done by Farley, 70% of the prostitutes met the criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. I don't know many professions other than perhaps the armed forces that their workers regularly suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Therefore, by term terming something a legitimate business is, is a very dangerous thing to do. I don't think it's a legitimate business at all. It's somewhere where women suffer. There were a lot of women in the study also who made references to prostitution as paid rape. I don't think that we should be condoning prostitution at all as a legitimate business if many of the women feel that they are just being raped on a daily basis. It was also found by the Budapest group that 90% of the women in Amsterdam wanted to get out of the profession. Something that is legal surely means that women have the freedom to get out of it. They didn't have the freedom in this case and they're controlled often by pimps, by drug dealers, and by the need to feed their children. I think that it's a very dangerous thing to establish a link between a legal marketplace because it just brings about a legal business. There's been studies that have found that an illegal marketplace of prostitution creates a marketplace of traffickers. So by creating the demand for sex, you're also creating a market for traffickers to bring in victims and therefore create more demand. And that has also been found to um, increase the children coming in to be prostituted. Therefore, I want to summarise by saying, by legalising something and by definition deeming it acceptable, the real issues and what happens behind closed doors to these women are lost and forgotten. I want to just finish on the question and ask, do we really want to legitimise an industry which causes so much harm? One of the big issues here is most people would agree that prostitution 
is immoral. Uh, but, and I absolutely agree with the opposition on that point, but the big question is whether, um, whether legalising it would get rid of some of the worst harms of it. And I wouldn't say it is totally legitimate because it is immoral uh, selling the sex. But when you legalise prostitution, you reduce the ability of pimps to force uh, vulnerable women into prostitution. You reduce the violence. Um, you, um, you reduce the murders of prostitutes. And so, whilst it whether, whilst, whether it's legitimate depends quite a lot on how you define legitimacy, whether you think legality is legitimacy or morality. Um, I think it is entirely possible to say that it's immoral, but still say it should be legal. Thanks, Jay. Uh, do we have any more points of proposition information? Opposition? Abstention? Everyone's here today is Japan. Um, so, next over to Bradley, who is a first year medic from Trinity College. The crucial thing to realize in today's debate is that the motion is this house believes that prostitution is a legitimate form of business, which means that it has nothing to do with moral morality, nothing to do with legalization. The crux of our argument is the idea that the illegality of prostitution is the cause of the stigmatization that leads to the immorality of prostitution. If you look at it from a business point, business perspective, the idea is that it is a legitimate business. What's a business? It's an entity that provides a service to individuals that can run a profit. Prostitution does this. They engage in a social contract with a transactor and a buyer of the goods. No, not yet. I'll still get a minute yet. Awesome. <laughs> the study by, Joe, by Stephen Levitt at the University of Chicago. Prostitutes make about $25 to $30 an hour, more than individuals make on a regular basis sometimes, and it supplies a demand, a growing demand. There are prostitutes of different varieties, different classes. You can have lower-end prostitutes, you can have prostitutes for David Miliband, for all he knows. And it's the crucial thing to realize is that it's crucial to separate the distinctions between their ephemeral claims about morality and the status quo in which we blur the distinction between willing prostitutes and prostitutes that are forced into the activity. It's essentially, what they're trying to do by using morality is to essentially scapegoat the industry for few instances of victimization. It happens everywhere. The argument we're trying to make is that prostitution is, never, is inevitably going to occur in, in the world. Just because it's illegal does not mean it's not a legitimate business. Um, if you look at the idea is that the illegality of its performance, the illegality of prostitution builds an identity where people see that prostitution is something that's not accepted by society, something that should be frowned on, should be shunned. But the idea is that it's not necessarily true. You have, in, you have similar situations with, say, drug trafficking, similar situations with medical testing. Medical testing, you can abuse your body, you can sell your parts of your body, but it's viewed as legal and accepted by society, I'm not mainly right. because, no thank you, mainly because <laughs> you can sign a waiver and it's legal to do it. So a large part of the stigmatization comes from the fact that it's illegal in the status quo. And people actually ignore the actual individuals themselves and tend to speak for themselves. And by, by using all these studies that she cites, like the 93 study uh, and all these other studies, the thing is that these studies come from a perspective of female prostitution and they, they in and of themselves actively promote this stigmatization and status quo. They un undergo this kind of normativity where the heterosexual identity of prostitution is the one that's the most common thing and they ignore, say, male prostitutes, LGBT or homosexual prostitutes, which means that they actually confer the same kind of prostitution, that trying, the stigmatization that they're trying to get rid of, which means that there's no actual tangible way through their means of debate and their means of activity that prostitution would actually prostitute that in their ways of argumentation, that prostitution is a bad thing. In fact, I actually defend that prostitution is a moral thing because many people say it's a, it's a right to feminist self-identity. It's a right for you as an individual to choose if you want to become a prostitute. Choose whether you want to make a 1.6% of South Korea's gross domestic product, which is an incredible amount of money if you think about it in the long term. And this idea about sex trafficking, which is the most prominent argument they have on their side, is the idea that sex trafficking is a byproduct of the illegality of prostitution. The fact that it's not um, the, fact that it's not, the fact that prostitution is not acknowledged by society means that it's frowned upon, it means that it, but it's sex trafficking can flourish because it's an, Ill, it's an illegal activity that can 
take on the wills and the ill harms of the Constitution. By acknowledging that it's a legitimate form of business, we can take a by, by acknowledging that it's a le legitimate form of business, the first steps can be taken to promote more regulation. Because it's acknowledging it as the first step. From the business perspective, prostitution is a legal form of activity. It, sorry, it's prostitution is a it's an economically safe form of activity, and it produces a business. Whether or not it's moral or not is not the question of today's debate. They, the whether or not it's legal or not is not the question of today's debate. It's about whether it can produce a profit for individuals from a clearly objective economic point of view, and it can. And that's a crucial thing to realize. Yeah, sure, go ahead. You often talk about this, the often definition of legitimacy is it does have an ethical aspect to it. Alright, sure. Alright, thanks for reminding me. That's, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I, that one's good. Um, the idea is that essentially, you, take, you can take legitimate out of context. In the form of legitimacy, in the form of the economic world, a business needs to make a profit. In the, can the Canadian like, I don't know, Revenue Department defines legitimate business as the uh, as a business that can produce a significant form of revenue. Which means that the only aspect in the context of this resolution is that, yes, prostitution is legitimate. Uh, ask four minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, so that's, if you look at legitimate in another sense for morality, then maybe it's not moral or not, but the illegality of it is sh shrouds the entire situation right now. And you can't actually make a distinction whether it's moral or not when we see that through a lens of illegality. And that's a problem right now. So in the end, it actually is a form of business. You can't get drowned around by these arguments about morality. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, no, I think it. Well, I'd first like to say that it is an honor and privilege to be here to speak in front of all of you. Um, as Rachel mentioned, uh, I founded a nonprofit two years ago called MAT2. It's about like tattoo, but with an M. And it's the first nonprofit to exist that aims to get men involved, engage and educate men on the myths and realities of prostitution. And I wanted to mention that before I came to England, um, I had many survivors of prostitution come up to me and ask me to share the truths about what happens to them to Cambridge. And so it's an absolute honor to be here to fulfill their desire. And it's very close to my heart, as you might be able to tell as I talk. We'll see how well I do. Um, so I first wanted to cite a study that was conducted by eight PhDs. They went to nine countries throughout Asia, Europe, South Africa, South America, Africa, and North America. They interviewed 854 prostituted individuals. They wanted to interview more, but they weren't allowed to. What they found was that of the 854 prostituted individuals, 89% wanted to escape but they believed there were no other options. And they wanted to escape immediately. Not find a part-time job, escape. As we've heard, some say, if we legalize prostitution, we can then regulate it. And then if we regulate it, we can provide them healthcare. Wow, right. So we must've got it wrong 200 years ago. We should've just kept slavery legal regulated it more, provided them health care, and all is fine. Ridiculous. Eighty no thank you. Eighty-nine percent want to escape. When it comes to Amsterdam, let's talk about Amsterdam. In nineteen ninety nine, there were reports that at least eighty percent of the women in Dutch legal prostitution had been trafficked there. Ten years later, in 2009, so two years ago, the Dutch government closed approximately two-thirds of the legal brothels in Amsterdam because of its inability to control the traffickers. In 2009 as well, I know of one anti-trafficking nonprofit called the Scarlet Cord 
received 300 calls from women trying to get out. And that toll-free number, that advertisement was in Dutch, okay? Most of these individual, individuals being trafficked there don't speak Dutch. Next, so I'm digressing a little bit. But when it comes to, in this business, prostitution, did you know that the average age of entry into this business is 13 years old in the UK? And we're all smart people here. We know about averages. That means that if someone enters into this at the age of 17, someone else is entering into this at the age of nine. That's the average age of entry in many countries in Southeast Asia. When it comes to the question of why don't they leave? Well, many are threatened. Think about it, they enter in as a young teenager. They're threatened that if they leave, these traffickers, these pimps, these madams, they know where their family is, if they leave, their families are going to be killed. If they leave, they themselves are going to be killed. Once they get older and they get pregnant, if they leave, the child is going to be killed. Once they become old enough, and they can, these pimps and madams can actually put them out in public, then they start obtaining multiple criminal records. Additionally, when these girls enter into that age, they don't finish school. Why is it the majority of prostituted individuals have not been to school? The average age is 13 years old. These are the realities that keep them in there. So for example, once they have the courage to actually leave, and they say they do escape, who is going to hire them? Multiple criminal records, no formal qualifications. What are they gonna do? So if they don't kill themselves, like many do in this business, they go right back into it. I'd also like to make a point that the actual average income in the U.S. that a prostituted individual can make is much more than $25 or $30 an hour. The average prostituted individual in the U.S. makes $150,000 a year for per pimp or madame. $150,000 a year. Translating that to pounds, about 95,000 pounds a year. Will that madame or that pimp just let that business go out the door? Absolutely not. So to get into this business, well, to actually, let me say this. To escape, to escape this business is near impossible. Oh, I'll finish very shortly. Think about this. To escape this business, well, let me say it this way, sorry. 89% of the people in this business want to escape it immediately. 89% in this business want to escape it. The average age of entry is 13 years old. And the sad reality is many women that are trapped in this count it a blessing when they receive HIV because then they can leave and have a peaceful few years. This business is not reasonable and acceptable.